um, move on with our program. Again, I want to thank Proven Winners for sponsoring this webinar. Um, our sponsors allow us to offer these webinars for free. The um, uh, software that we use for these webinars is, is not um, free, it's not cheap, so um, uh, we have to pay a subscription for this, but uh, we were able to offer these free because of Proven Winners and our other sponsors for our other webinars. Um, if we will take questions at the end of the um, each session, so um, Raymond will have a few minutes to, to answer some questions. If you don't get your, answer, your question answered, um, please feel free to um, email our, uh, our speakers. We've listed the, the emails for our speakers at the, the beginning of each of the sessions, um, and you can get those also from the um, slide set from our, the PDFs that you can download. So without any further delay, I want to introduce Raymond Cloyd. Uh, he's an entomologist from um, Kansas State University. Um, Raymond, I'm just going to um, turn your voice on here so that uh, everybody can hear you. Just give me a second here. Okay, Ray, you should be ready to talk. Um, let's see if we can hear you okay. Can you hear me okay? I can, I can. Okay, Raymond, I'm going to give you um, control of the computer so that you can uh, um, start your presentation. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, and that is don't get tripped by thrips, um, effective thrips management. Uh, what you expect today is uh, introduction, brief biology, behavior, and life cycle of Western flower thrips, and of course management, and then hopefully at the end there'll be some questions and discussion. All right, Ray, I need you to uh, to share your screen so everybody can see your presentation. Uh, how do I do that, Brian? Again? <laughs> uh, you just need to up at the top. It should at the control panel. It should say um, show my screen. Show if you screen. if you exit your PowerPoint, um, it should prompt you to do so. So do I, do, do I need to hit this black button? Uh, give it a shot. Okay. How about that? There we go. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so I'm not going to repeat this stuff because I want to get the information out, but a question that I have for everyone is how do you minimize problems with Western flower thrips during spring annual production? Um, the problem is there's a lot of crops being grown. Western flower thrips feeds in over 350 types of crops. So in most likelihood, you're going to be growing something that Western flower thrips is going to find very uh, delightful to feed upon. Uh, let's talk about this critter. I, I, I love this insect. We rear it. Unfortunately, it's destructive, uh, both directly feeding injury to the leaves and flowers. And the other problem is it vectors the number of viruses. Uh, the primary one would, in spring bedding plants would be in Paige's necrotic spot virus, and another one would be tomato spider wilt virus. Uh, the, inset, the one on the left is the adult, and the image on the right is an immature stage of western flower thrips. Uh, the life cycle, it's always important to understand the life cycle. Uh, the eggs are inserted into the leaf tissues, and then you have two nymphal stages that are feeding on the foliage, and then they go down to the growing medium, and they have two pupil stages, which do not feed, and then they come out as adults. Now, the reason I circled uh, the stages there, those are the ones that are susceptible to both insecticides and biologic control agents such as natural enemies, which we'll talk about. The life cycle is, like all insects, very temperature dependent. Uh, it takes about oh, two weeks to go from egg to adult when the temperatures are about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, why are they a pest? Well, there is no shortage of reasons. Well, higher reproductive capacity, the females can lay up to 300 eggs during their 45-day uh, lifespan, broad host range, rapid life cycle, and of course the big one is resistance to insecticides, and we'll, we'll cover that. Virus vector, feeding habit, and of course their small size, about 2 millimeters in length. Uh, plan of attack? Fundamentals. Sanitation, physical, insecticidal, biological, and we're going to cover uh, these uh, in, in minor detail as we go along. So what are the non-insecticidal means of managing western flower tips? Well, the big one is, guess what? Scouting. You have to scout to know what stage is out there. And on the left, you see yellow sticky card with 
western flowers that you see those beady eyes and those antennas and they have those fringed wings I like to use yellow because you see them easier and you pick up other insect pests such as winged white flies fungus gnat leaf miners and shore flies uh, but if you want to use blue you can but I prefer yellow uh, weeds I'm not talking about marijuana here but many weeds are reservoirs for western flower thrifts this is a pigweed and the damage you see there is caused by western flower thrifts feeding damage so many weeds not only are reservoirs for western flower thrips but they harbor the viruses that western flower thrips will vector onto spring uh, annual bedding plants if it's feasible a great way to restrict movement into greenhouses is micro screening or insect screening this prevents the adults from migrating in off of areas such as weedy up weedy fields or if you're near areas of soybean or corn production or even vegetable production because as soon as those crops start to dry down the thrips will migrate right into greenhouses I know this is not always feasible but if it is an option you might want to consider this weeds outside greenhouses again this is why screening can be very effective because many but first of all um, if you have this operation you might want to think of using Roundup or getting rid of these weeds because the thrips on there will move right in to the greenhouse because there's no physical barrier or impediment to restrict them from moving in okay the primary way of dealing with thrips in greenhouses is the use of insecticides and there are a number of insecticides still commercially available this is not an exhaustive list but a common list out there now I want to highlight a very important procedure if you're going to use insecticides against western flower thrips on spring bedding plants is irrigate the crop before you spray you don't want the crop to be stressed in any way so be sure you irrigate also annual spring bedding plants have a very uh, thin cuticle so they're much more susceptible to potential phytotoxicity uh, than plants that would be grown later in the summer or fall where they've been kind of hardened off the factors that can, you can use that I promote for maximizing effectiveness is timing of application that is when the most susceptible life stage is present coverage of all plant parts because most of the materials that you will use are either contact or translaminar uh, systemic insecticides are minimally if at all effective against western flower tips especially when plants are in flower and frequency in, is in regards to the number of applications uh, during a cropping cycle in general we recommend at least two applications per week and I'll talk more about rotations meaning you want to use the same mode of action within a generation which is about two weeks early on in the spring production cycle I can't I can't express it anymore you have to read the label of all insecticides labels change um, and the label is a law so every time you're going to mix and load and spray thoroughly read the label I know they're not aphrodisiacs but they contain a lot of good information now again going back to this life cycle the, the stages that I've highlighted or circled in green are the ones that are susceptible to many of the insecticides registered for use against thrips the eggs are not at all bothered because they're embedded in the leaf tissues and the pupa stages are primarily in the growing media and they're not feeding and their metabolism is quite low so they're not susceptible to most of the insecticides that are nerve toxins western flower thrips has what we call a cryptic or thigmotactic behavior which means it likes to have its body pressed up against a surface that's why you tend to find them in terminal growth buds or flowers there is something called behavior resistance and this natural cryptic or thigmotactic behavior where thrips like to reside in enclosed or concealed locations on plants um, actually may reduce direct exposure to contact insecticides and that's why you end up with failures because you're just not getting enough of the volume of material to these locations like the terminal buds and flowers and that's why you need to use high volume applications so it is possible that any spray applications select for this increased cryptic behavior or we also call it the avoidance factor 
So the primary means of managing western flower tips with insecticides is rotating products with different modes of action. And again, you want to use the same mode of action within a generation, which is about one to two weeks. Now, in the early spring, when the temperatures are lower, you can use the same mode of action within about a one to two week period, but in the summertime, you're going to have to use it probably once a week because the life cycle will occur faster in the summer than it would in the spring. So what you're doing is gambling, literally. The rotation of insecticides assumes that the frequency of resistant individuals will decrease or decline during the application of another insecticide with a different mode of action. And we'll go over some examples of some rotation programs uh, fairly shortly. So every time you apply an insecticide, you're placing selection pressure on the thrips population. What you're doing is you're killing all the susceptibles and leaving the resistant individuals that will breed and enrich the gene pool with resistance individuals, okay? And that is the key is that's why you're selecting or rotating modes of action to minimize that frequency of resistant individuals in the population. So here's some examples of rotation programs that I recommend and growers use. Uh, you can mix and match, and I don't have enough time to go over them, but if you look at these, they all have different modes of action, and these are what I call uh, eight-week rotation programs. You're using one product for uh, two weeks, and then you switch to another one. So after the end of eight weeks, you would actually you would go back to the first one you started out with. And if there's any questions at the end, uh, please feel free to ask me regarding these rotation programs. So what are some of the factors that result in poor control? Well, spray timing. When the age structure, if, if it's 80% eggs, you're not going to get much control or suppression. Uh, spray coverage, we talked about that. pH of the spray solution, many of the insecticides commercially available uh, like to have the pH of the spray solution below 7. If it's above 7, you might experience alkaline hydrolysis, which reduces the effectiveness of the application. Frequency of applications, again, I talked about that. And then migration of western flower thrips into greenhouses and nurseries from other sources. For example, if you're next to a corner soybean field, they have a product called Tracer. Well, that has the same mode of action, same active ingredient as conserved. So when that product, that the crop dries down, those thrips are moving into those nice, juicy horticulture crops that you're growing in the greenhouse. And if you go ahead and spray with conserve, in all likelihood, that population has already been genetically evolved to that mode of action and you're not going to get much mortality with the application. So it's always a good idea to find out what the neighboring growers are doing in terms of trying to suppress thrips populations. Another idea we've been using is uh, applying dolomitic limestone underneath benches that have soil. Uh, studies have shown that the pH, when it gets above 7 or 8, um, western flower thrips and other thrips may not uh, emerge as adults from the pupa. And uh, so there's been some old studies that have shown this has been for other thrips, but it could be an option if you have soil floors to apply dolomitic limestone to raise the pH, and it may negatively impact western flower thrips pupation uh, and then emergence to adults. Biologic control of thrips is feasible. It takes a lot of work. It can be done. We have predatory mites predatory bugs, fungi, and nematodes. However, I will be a realist and say, when you're dealing with bedding plants that are moving in four to six weeks, biologic controls may not have time to establish, but I would not negate that if you want to try it because there's no resistance issues and the crops are small, uh, you might want to consider the use of these various biologic control agents. Here's an example of Neosis cucumeris. This is a predatory mite for western flower thrips. It only feeds on the first end star, so it has no activity on the adults. That means you have to make releases early on, almost before you start detecting western flower thrips. The minute pirate bug, Aureus here, uh, sucks the juices or the guts out of the thrips. They will feed on the adults and the nymphs, 
they will undergo a dipause in the winter time, but they will come out back in spring. Uh, they do have activity on, again, the nymphs and adults uh, and have been shown to be very effective. But again, you have to release them early on before the thrips have established populations. The newest mite is Amblyxia swirsky. Uh, growers are using this because it is effective. It does, the mite does have activity on the first and second instar nymphs, which is different from Cucumeris. And it also has activity on white flies too. So it has a, it's a, broad, it's a mite with a lot broader spectrum activity and a number of our, grower, our growers are using it. For example, one of our growers uh, down south of Manhattan, the Osho Gardens, uh, their biocontrol program for thrips is 100% use of predatory mites, either cucumeris, but I've been, I've been working with them to use Swirsky uh, because they do have white fly problems sometimes. And again, he uses no pesticides. This is his operation, and all it is is 100% biocontrol of western flower thrips. So it can be done on spring annual bedding plants and summer bedding plants. The other one that I'm, 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 I think people should look at, growers should look at, is the beneficial fungi. Now this is a thrips in trouble due to sporulation, but let me explain how these work. When you spray, you're spraying spores that land on the insect, they penetrate the cuticle, and then they actually eat, consume the inside of the insect, killing it, and they burst out and what you saw here is a sporulation. You rarely see that in a greenhouse. You pretty much see them morbid and dead. But uh, these do require a certain relative humidity, about 60 to 75 percent, and a certain temperature, primarily between about 20 to 25 degrees C. Um, but I'll show some. Uh, I'll talk about these as we go along. There are four commercially available products. Botanigard has been around for many years. Uh, no fly, preferral, and Met 52 uh, are the so there's four of them out there uh, that are can be used. And the thing about spring bedding plant production is the temperature and relative humidity are conducive uh, for the proliferation and the effectiveness of these types of products. So some of our research we've been doing is I'm just going to give you one image is that we have found that rotation programs that incorporate EPFs are just as effective in suppressing western flower thrips populations than the standard rotation programs that only include insecticides. And below is one of them. It's Overture, Botanigard, Pedestal, and Conserve. And what we have found is that um, rotation programs that incorporate some of these EPFs are just as effective as rotation programs that use standard insecticides. The benefit of that? is you will likelihood minimize the development of resistance in those western flower thrips populations. So we do have, I have an extension publication. You can download it. Uh, Brian Crew could probably get some information. I need to update it, but uh, it's been around since 2010. It does include some rotation programs, examples. So um, you can download it free of charge and uh, provide a lot more information than I am able to present in this webinar. So how do you evaluate the effectiveness of your Western Flower Thrips Management Program for spring annual bedding plants production? Uh, I leave that up to you. How are you evaluating the effectiveness? Are you scouting? Uh, what are you using? If you find a lot of thrips on plants, throw the plants away. Don't try to save them. Uh, it's going to be more cost effective to dispose of them away from the greenhouse at least 30 miles, well, 30 feet, uh, as much as possible. That's the end. I'm done. I thank you for your attention. I hope you all learned something in the process. And with that, I'll be happy to address any questions or what is bugging you. Thank you very much. Okay. First, first question is, do you have any ideas for peony field controls? Um, uh, many of the products I mentioned do have use in field applications. You just have to read the label, uh, but again, you want to use uh, different modes of action within a within about a two-week period. Okay, question: Rotate. Do we spray the same chemicals repeatedly for two weeks and rotate, or use different chemicals every four to five days? Excellent question. Uh, I recommend you use a cement mode of action. 
for two weeks and then rotate to a different mode of action. Uh, the only the the only we have that is don't use acephate one week or orthene and then switch to measure all the next week. Uh, they both have the same mode of action. What you'd want to do is use orthene for uh, two weeks. Something then you switch to avid and then you could go back to measure all after that. But the bottom line is use this. Use the same mode of action within a generation, about two weeks, and then rotate to a different mode of with a different mode of action. Ray, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, Brian. Now. I apologize that for everybody. My my computer was not responding for a, a couple of moments, so uh, I apologize for that. Um, all right, I, I'll, okay. I'm I'm back in here on the questions. Tell me if. If you've answered these already, um, um, let's see. Well, Brian, let me let me go through the ones right now because I, okay. I can deal with. Uh, another one question was: Any experience with Captiva? Uh, no, I, uh, I I have a label for Captiva. Those that don't know what that is, it's a combination of capsaicin oils, garlic oil, and soybean oil. It's a gallon product. Uh, we are going to evaluate it this year. It just, it just recently came out. How, how often to apply the entomopathogenic fungi to the same crops? Um, that's a great question. And in general, I would say use them uh, just, the same, just the same way you would use your typical standard insecticides. Um, but you could go about three to four weeks. The, the, the nymphs are more resistant to the EZPFs than the adults because they molt so frequently. But I would say you could probably use the same EPF for about three to four weeks before switching to something else. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it basically <laughs> is it basically pointless to use conserve at this point? Um, great question. It depends if it's working for you fine. If not, you're going to have to look at some other options. I do know that there's quite a few populations of Western flower tips throughout the United States that growers say uh, are basically taking a bath in it. So you're going to have problems. If it's not working, don't use it at that point. Uh, those are the questions I see on the screen, Brian. All right. Um, oh, well, well, yeah. Did, did you... Uh, um, Address the one about outdoor peony fields. Yeah, the, uh, in Alaska. Yeah, I, I think I addressed that one. That one was from uh, yeah Janice Chumley. Yeah, I addressed that one. Okay. Um. Well, if uh, nobody else has any other questions for for Raymond at this time, here we go. We got a couple more coming in. Um, any experience with expire and mainspray? Uh, great question. Expire. And both those are new products. Uh, I believe we, well, I think we evaluate Expire. Expire, by the way, is a combination of Spinoteram and uh, Sulfoxifer. Spinoteram is the same chemical group as uh, Spinosad, which is Conserve. So you would not use that back to back with Conserve. Uh, Sulfoxifer is a neonicotinoid relative. It's a 4C, not a 4A. Um, I believe in our studies that did. Uh, fairly well. Uh, mainspring, we've only we have only evaluated mainspring on white flies. We've not done thrips, and it proved to be very effective on white flies as both a foliar and a drench. It's a it's a, uh, it's a systemic insecticide uh, from Syngenta, and uh, it proved to be very effective again on white flies. Uh, we are going to do some work on thrips this year, but we have not evaluated it last year. Okay. Did you do, did you give a recommended rate for the dolomitic limestone under the bench? Uh, no, I didn't. They're going to have to read the label on that. Or or I I know growers that just basically um, throw it till there's a layer and then they water it in and that's what that's what they do. Okay. And then uh, any other products effective on the stages within the soil? Uh, we're working on that. Um, there there is a biologic control called uh, row beetles. Uh, we're going to do some studies this year looking at it, but uh, there are no chemicals uh, at this point. It's either going to be biological. Uh, the nematodes supposedly work. The data doesn't substantiate the, the actual reality of it, but my, my straight answer is no. 
All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have here for questions for Raymond. Um, like I mentioned before, if you have any more com um, questions, um, please uh, feel free to email him directly. Thank you very much. Well, thank Raymond. you very much.